Welcome to Real Estate Real Connections. I'm Julie Miller, connecting you to all things real estate. Today we have Megan Williamson from Megan Williamson Photography joining us. Megan, thanks for being here today. You're welcome. Well, when I was thinking about the guests I wanted to have on the show in regards to real estate, I thought you would be the perfect guest, especially as we're about to enter the spring market. Um, I feel like real estate photography is something that is often overlooked and probably very needed in most cases. So before we jump into that, can you just tell us a little bit about your background? I have a degree in marketing, but by the time I graduated from college, I already was doing a lot of photography and friends started asking me to do their weddings. And so for about 18 years, I was a wedding photographer. I would do some families and seniors, but my main business was weddings. Um, and that was a great fit as my kids were young. And I, was con I considered myself a stay-at-home mom. And then on the weekends, my best friend and I shot weddings together and, together, and um, the husbands would stay home with the kids. And so it was kind of my outlet, I guess you could say. Like, I loved what I did, but it was also my me time away from the kids. And then about four years ago in 2020, I had done a little bit of real estate photography, but hadn't like gone full-fledged into it. We had moved here from Illinois, and I had the opportunity to start shooting with McInnes Realty. And that just kind of opened up doors. And two years ago, I completely left wedding photography. Wow, congratulations. Thanks. That's exciting. So you say McInnes Realty, your husband is an agent there. Yeah. So ironically, he was not with McInnes. Oh, he wasn't when at the I time. Shooting. Okay. He was not even, he had his license, but he was still with his other full time okay. job and was with another brokerage in the area. And, um, so you were kind of the catalyst that got him. Yeah, okay. I did. I just, there were so many things that I loved, loved and love about my tennis that I kept saying, like nudging him here and there, you, you need to move over, you need to move over. Like, I feel like this is what you're missing. And he's been there, I think, three years now and absolutely loves it. So if you could talk to us a little bit about real estate photography, um, just kind of tell us what we need to know. The viewers who may be considering listing their homes, um, the agents who may be watching, who maybe don't currently get professional photos done on their listings. Let's talk about why that's important. Okay, yeah. So we live in such a visual world now. Everything we're looking at daily is our pictures. So you have about two to three seconds to capture your viewer's attention. And how you do that is with images. And so I always say that if you're, to put your best foot forward, you want to hire a professional photographer. Um, and you just can't get those images with your cell phone. And there's a lot of things that go into it, whether it's equipment, um, staging, how you hold the camera, like vertical lines and horizontal lines, um, even the, the width of the lens and how far you, know, you can see in a room. When you hire a professional photographer for your listing, you're also showing future clients that you're going to do that for their listings as well. So it's not, it's not just that house that you're trying to sell. It's that you're showing your future clients that you're going to put your best foot forward and you're going to showcase their house in the best way as well. Very good point. It's kind of like, I, I like the analogy that you used in getting professional hair and makeup done. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason why we do that. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, we were talking about this because we've done some other things together that when I'm doing branding pictures for myself or talking to my clients about it, I always say, you know, have your hair and makeup done professionally. It's not because you're trying to be someone that you're not. It's because you're trying to put your best foot forward. It's the same thing with the house. Like, even in terms of picking up, my house never looks like what it does when I'm listing it, but I want people to come in. I'm trying to sell a house here right. and I want it to look the very best. Megan, when a client is looking to possibly list their home for sale, what are some tips or advice that you would give to them? When you're looking for an agent, I highly recommend not just interviewing them and talking with them and seeing if they're a good fit, but also see what they've done for previous listings. Um, you can see if they've used a professional photographer, how they've marketed, and if they're gonna do that same thing for your listing. If it's not something they've done in the past, they're probably not gonna do it now unless you really push it. And it's better to find someone who's going to do that than to try to talk someone into it. Are there any um, specific questions that maybe an agent should ask of a potential photographer if they're interviewing different photographers? What kind mm -hmm. of questions should they be asking? You wanna hire someone who already does real estate photography. Not that you can't give someone a chance, but it is a different 
different game than other photography. I mean, after being in the wedding industry and doing that, I had to completely learn a different style of photography. And I'm always learning, um, you know, from where I was four years ago to where I am now. And now that I also do vacation rentals and custom homes, like all of those are kind of different styles of photography. Um, so that's important that they know what they're doing. And then also, you don't need to quiz them on their equipment and stuff, but you can't just use what most photographers have in their camera bag for portraits and stuff is not what you can use in real estate photography because you do have to have wider lenses. And then ask to see their work. Um, I will say that I was given a chance and because I was given a chance, that's why I am where I am today. And I, you know, now I shoot for probably 75 to 80 different realtors in the area and I have a team behind me. Um, so I'm thankful for that chance that I was given, but you also have to make sure that the product in the end is what you're looking for in those images. Absolutely. So another area that you do uh, frequently are vacation rental homes. Mm -hmm. um, so tell us a little bit about that. When I'm looking for a vacation rental and I see images that aren't professional, my mind immediately goes to what else are they cutting corners on? You know, are they not mm -hmm. hiring a cleaner? And I do have a lot of realtors who then refer me to vacation rentals because they'll have clients buy a home or turning it into that, particularly for Notre Dame games. And then I am contacted to do that. That photography is a little bit different, knowing that those they're going to use for years to come until they update the home. Um, it's just that it's a higher end photography, more of what you would see in like an interior design magazine versus real estate that you want to look really good and catch the buyer's eyes, but they're not going to be, they're going to be redone when the house is sold again. Sure. Definitely worth the investment yes. there. And then the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was branding. Mm -hmm. I know you work with and coach a lot of um, agents um, and probably other businesses as well at, in branding mm -hmm. and um, that type of marketing. So maybe yeah. we could touch on that. Yeah, definitely. Um, so realtors don't always like to get their headshots updated. <laughs> it's like across the board. I still see a few <laughs> glamour shots yeah, floating definitely. around out there. <laughs> sure. I'm like, we're almost into a generation that won't even understand what a glamour shot is. Yes. So that's what really cracks me up. But being in the service industry, and this goes for myself too, I can't hide behind a picture. I can't hide behind an old picture and I can't hide behind a heavily edited picture. I just can't stress it enough that be who you are. Like, am I always happy exactly where I'm at? Am I happy that, you know, I'm aging all of the things? No, but that's not why people hire me. They don't hire me because I look a certain way or my pictures are flawless of myself. They hire me because of not only my ability as a photographer, but because of who I am, because they like me and they connect with me. And you can begin that connection with people through your images. And I always say that I almost feel like it's more embarrassing to have this old outdated picture or this heavily edited picture and then show up in person and I can only imagine the things they're they're thinking. They're really thinking, oh wow, they've gone downhill. <laughs> so honestly, most people don't enjoy updating their headshots. I don't even enjoy updating my headshots, but you know, in years down the road, those are gonna be <laughs> your young pictures, whether or not right now you feel like it's, you know, that you've aged since the last time. And just being authentic. It's just it, we live in a world that has become so fake and it stands out being authentic. For sure. Now, since you brought that up, it, it makes me ask another question, or I guess bring up another topic that we haven't touched on yet. And back to shifting back to real estate photography, how does AI play into the picture? That's mm -hmm. the whole, the big topic now is yeah. AI everything. So how does that affect your business? So it's one of those, like, yeah, you said hot topics and some people are either really scared of it or other people are completely jumping on board with it. And being in photography and videography and stuff like that, um, there are so many benefits. I'm not going to lie. Like there are still, there are a lot of things that help make my business run smoother, but that's what it is. It's making my business run smoother, not creating fake content. And we are kind of walking this line with real estate photography um, between the real and the fake. And there is a balance. Um, I was recently listening to a podcast of, other real estate photographers. And one of the things that they said, because there is the fear of, will I have a job in the future, is actually 
taking it back to what it used to be. Stop doing the fake um, windows, the fake skies, all of the things that you're seeing in real estate photography because that's actually that's what's going to make you stand out. When you take a listing live, the images have to be current um, and really represent what the house is. So a lot of times I'll have a agent, or it happens more with homeowners when I'm there than the actual mm -hmm. agent asking me, but they'll say, can you fix the gutters? Can you fix up the wall? Can you do all of those things? And I always tell them, you know, that's we, if they're going to be painting a room or they're going to be doing X, Y, and Z prior to the house going live, then yes, like there's a hole in the wall, I can fix the hole. But I, it's, it's, it's that fine line because if they don't fix it, then it's a misrepresentation. Well, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. It's been super informative. Um, if somebody wanted to reach out to you and work with you, how could mm -hmm. they find you? Um, they can find me online at megwilliamsonphotography.com. I'm also on Instagram with that same handle, or they can call or text me, and my number is 574-261-5704. Thank you so much, Megan. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for watching Real Estate Real Connections. This episode has been brought to you by Metropolitan Title, Indiana's number one title insurance team.